Oh, what is going on, everybody? Hello. It is Biz Martyrs here. And welcome back to Ace Attorney Investigations. When we left off, there are some hoot nanny shenanigans going down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We got into the to the to the flight attendant's room and wasn't an owl and a grandma hooting nanny. Ow, that hurt. That hurt a lot. <laughs> but um, uh, the, the the our girl, our girl Tenero is being framed for the murder. Someone took the key card. So like arrest her. But we have, we must protect her at all costs, so we must keep mm -hmm. investigating. Wes, this is the cargo. <laughs> <Yay. laughs> it's so big. <laughs> he's like a five year old. <laughs> he really is. Oh my god, he's a big man child. <laughs> <laughs> this plane is a special model. That is both a super large cargo hold and ultra luxurious first class seating. We've seen the seating. <laughs> So this is this is the real scene of the murder. There's certainly a high possibility of that, which is why we are here, correct? Okay, let's get investigating, sir. <laughs> Begin investigation, investigation of the lower level of the cargo hold. Hi, friend. I'm gonna go touch all these boxes. <laughs> all sorts of boxes are piled up here. This one says flammable, and that one it says pharmaceuticals. This one says for exorcism use only. Um. Just what kind of operation is this airline running? That's actually a very wonderful... Uh, excuse D excuse <laughs> me. You are very... Oh, that's just a very solid invisible wall here. Exorcism. <laughs> yeah. Oh, whoa. <laughs> hey, who's at the suitcase, pal? This is going to be you. It's what the victim checked in, sir. So this suitcase belonged to Mr. Hicks. I don't think he'd mind if we take a closer look. Does that not the ordinary in here, sir? Wait. A file? And it's a photo of Miss Von Karman, sir. Uh. Uh, looks like a profile on Francesca. Weird. Okay. Why, well, Mr. Hicks? And remember, have she a came here saying that she, you know, it seemed like she already knew that a crime had happened. Hmm. Remember? Yeah. Like she was already on it. What are you hiding? What are you hiding? I'm not hiding anything. Hey, right, I'm gonna look at all these suitcases. Holy suitcases, Miss Edgeworth. It's like an all you can use suitcase fair. Um. <laughs> These must be all the leftover ones they couldn't sell. So, most of them. <laughs> the ones the company's planning to dispose of after this flight is over. This paint job is really <gasps> cool, don't you think? It's practically screams artsy. Oh, he likes it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why not purchase one then? I'm sure it'll bring you much happiness. <laughs> you think so? Then maybe I will. Let's <gasps> see here. $1,200! Oh my god. I, I think I'll pass. And Miss Tanira wonders why they don't sell. You need two jobs just to buy one. Jeez. Huh, definitely looks like one is missing. And she bought one? She buys one every single flight. <laughs> How much does she make? Apparently a lot. Maybe she gets a creator's discount and it's like, oh, you get it for the for you get it for 15 bucks. <laughs> creator's discount. I don't think that's a thing. Hey, that's that's a, it's a bad term for for something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. They'd be like me commissioning <laughs> myself. <laughs> What is this brittle substance I'm stepping on? Technically, aren't you commissioning yourself every time you draw something out of out of just pleasure? Out of just interest? You're just you're you're you are you are creating your own work for yourself. It is your own commission. <laughs> but it's <laughs> free. <laughs> well, you're paying yourself whatever you've cost. It's like, hey, here's the sixty-five dollars, me. Okay, thanks, me. It's a complete wash. What the hell? Okay, stop. Big make... brain mode on this stop guy right here. Stop trying to give right. me a headache here. <laughs> what is this brittle substance I'm stepping on? It's a bunch of glass fragments? Huh. Glasses. Yeah. I think we can combine that probably automatically instantly because we glasses. have that. Yep. Uh, broken glasses broken and the glass glasses shards. And the glass shards. Bada bing, bada boom. Hopefully they're not. Not profile in French. Hopefully they're not too big compared to what his glasses are. I mean, that should be fine. It should be fine. The only place they could go to is the is the freaking thing upstairs, which would be a wild boom. trip. Boom. Big bang. I think we can safely conclude that these fragments are from a pair of glasses. And the victim was wearing a pair of broken glasses. Exactly what I was thinking. I'm sure the shards would match up perfectly with the remnants of these glasses lenses. Ergo, the victim is here, just as I suspected. <laughs> There's that ergo word so he likes. So you're saying that the real scene of the crime was here, sir? Isn't that what I've been saying for a while now? Oh, is it? I didn't know that. Oh my god. <sighs> Perhaps it's a bit too early to His draw that conclusion. confuzzled looks. I love it. However, I believe that the probability has just skyrocketed, skyrocketed 
considerably. All that's left is to find the murder weapon. Yes, indeed. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna touch this giant tarp. I know this plane was capable of carrying such large pieces of cargo. This thing's as tall as two of you on top of each other, sir. <laughs> It'll probably take 20 of you to cover the entire surface of its m monstrosity. What, really? Uh, I guess that sounds about right. <laughs> you don't need to take that throwaway estimate seriously, Detective. That was an insult on you, you know. Red sheets! Uh, no, bed sheets. Oh, bed sheets. <laughs> there was a chain there, so I just saw red sheets. Red sheets! I was like, that's a wonderful sounding company. Alright, keeping track of these many pieces of cargo must be very taxing on the cargo crew. That sure brings back memories of when I worked as a part-time mover, sir. Oh my gosh, a part-time mover, really? He's waiting for me to ask about the rest of the story. I want to hear more. But no matter how he pours on the puppy dog eyes, I have no intention of doing so. Damn it, I want to hear more <laughs> about Gumshoe's so backstory. Um, huh, nothing over here. Okay. And then Did we he have be one of those him. movers that throws things through broken windows into the truck? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I just love pushing the buttons and elevators and crosswalk signals. Yeah, you should give it a try, sir. Go on, push it. The elevator is currently stopped on the first floor, detective. It can't move. Oh, uh, yeah. I guess nothing would happen if you pushed it now. He's so sad. Well, nothing would happen normally anyway without the special key card. Oh, that says worse. That says worse. Oh. <laughs> well, nothing would happen normally anyway without the special key card. Both the door and the attendance room and the elevator control panels. Require a key card, which makes it impossible for a passenger to come down here. Huh. Yes, can I that's walk a, up the that's stairs? That's a big... <laughs> Yay! That's a big thing. But that's to leave, and we can't leave, so... No. Hang on, let me see if I can investigate this door, though. Not at all. Nope. <laughs> okay, so the only thing that I can really do... You know what, actually? Perfect thing I want to do? Talk to her, and yeah. present her that file that we got. Oh, true. You arrived at the scene of the crime before Detective Gumshoe, correct? And you then immediately began your to direct the investigation. It seems to me that you were already here at this airport for something besides this murder. Yes, I was. Why at this airport, huh? Yeah. I've been following a very large and involved governmental level international crime. But it's much too large for one person to take on alone. So it was decided that I should form a joint investigation with Interpol. Oh man, how Interpol loves Borginia, man. <laughs> we know that one for a fact. A joint investigation with <laughs> Interpol. <laughs> Interpol's involved? It's a top secret operation, so I really can't tell you any more than I already have. Well, you know what? You're gonna tell me a little bit more, because you need to explain yourself. There's something much more urgent we should be dealing with right now. What? Don't waste my time or yours. Wait, wait, wait. No, that's... Oh, that's just a suitcase receipt from upstairs. Wait, so we didn't get evidence from that? Did we really not? No, but but we did get from her the logic that she was investigating uh, something. And then the fact that there's a profile here probably... Me oh, you know what? He was an Interpol agent. Uh, so that explains that, but why was he murdered? That creates another the next... Interpol agent murder. <laughs> yeah, there's a tendency for that to happen now. Now, why would Mr. Hicks have a document profile? But this happened Francesca? like way before Apollo and Trucy's thing. Oh, I know. I bet he's a big fan of Miss Von Karma, sir. Oh, jeez. Francesca said that she had come to this airport as part of an Interpol investigation. Oh. Maybe Miss Hicks had heard she was coming to any follower. That's creepy. Detective, I think it's more likely that Mr. Hicks was, in actuality, Interpol Agent Hicks. I think Francesca has come ex has some explaining to do. Yeah. Francesca! Hello! We need to talk. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, we need to know the truth right now. You came to this airport to rendezvous with the victim, didn't you? Nonsense! What are you talking about? We found a profile detailing information about you in the victim's luggage. I suppose it was prepared for him so that he could recognize you when he landed. Which makes him not Mr. Hicks, but rather Interpol Agent Hicks. Isn't that correct? I should have known you'd figure it out, Miles. But it looks like they got to him first. So you really did come here to receive an Interpol agent then? Yes. Agent Hicks was on the trail of a very large international smuggling ring. Huh. Ah. More logic. He went undercover to investigate this crime, and it was I—it was I who put him on this case. 
I was supposed to receive a call from him on his cell phone once he had landed. I never expected to receive a call about his murder instead. That's hmm. gotta be frustrating. <laughs> I think we now have pretty definitive evidence that Agent Hicks came down here to the cargo hold. But what was he doing down here, sir? There's nothing but luggage. Oh, I get it. Maybe he forgot something in his suitcase and came down to get it. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, 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 Agent Hicks uh, came here for a work-related uh, reason. Of that, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm sure he was here to investigate the smuggling operation he was observing. Oh, <laughs> Francesca? Francesca. Sorry, because I always can't. What so did you just call me? Because <laughs> I keep saying Francesca instead of Francesca. Hmm. Do you know exactly how he intended to pursue his investigation? No, unfortunately, I was going to find out from him after he landed. I see. But this raises another question. A normal passenger can't access the cargo hold on their own. Nope. Agent Hicks. Oh. Agent Hicks must have identified himself to a member of the crew and entered the cargo hold with that person who let him in. Yes, and then he was murdered here. These glass fragments and his broken glasses are a testament to that. And then... You just yeeted up the elevator. The killer put Agent Hicks into one of the spare suitcases and... They entered the elevator. But while they were riding it up, the plane at that uh. patch of turbulence. Because the intense shaking suitcase popped open, Agent Hicks' body flew out. At the same time, his wallet fell out of his pocket, spilling its contents everywhere. Which explains why there was money scattered all over the elevator floor. And then they took the suitcase out and it went in. They, they put it back it, into yeah, the Yeah, they put it into shop. the store, grabbed the piggy bank. Bashed him in the head to be like, murder weapon, boop. Yep. Drop that down, playing the, the wallet on us. Yep. I think it's pretty easy to say who the culprit is at this stage. What? Really, sir? Hmm. I know what you're thinking, Miles Edgeworth. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> but the killer can be none other than Miss Rhonda Tenero. Uh, but there's no motive from her. If it, is, if it was a crew member, any one of them could have shown Agent Hicks to the cargo hold. Exactly. But the point is, to keep in mind is the key card that allows the elevator to come down here. The only person with such high level access is Miss Rhoda Tenero. I'd say that's a pretty decisive piece of information, wouldn't you? I thought... I thought that... All, I called her Rhonda, but it's Rhoda. <laughs> My brain saw an N for a second. I know what she's trying to say, but I'm not certain it's as simple as that. Rhoda is such a weird name. It is. <laughs> All right. So if it was a crew member, one of them could have shown any to the cargo hole. But the point to keep in mind is the key card that allows the elevator to come down here. The only person with such high level access is Miss Rhoda here. I doubt that. You'd think that the pilot Someone also could have taken it. the key card. Well, that's the point of the... Uh, why would such important things like the key card be entrusted to only one person? According to Cami Meal, Rhoda Tenero is in charge of most of the important stuff. Then what exactly is this Meal in charge of? Chatting it up with that foolish captain, apparently. She was being so foolishly foolish that I didn't want to ask her what her other duties were. <laughs> I understand how you feel, but what me just now was uncalled for. In the end, the only one who could have let Agent Hicks into the hold was Rhonda Tenero. I said Rhonda again. Rhoda. Rhoda. <laughs> These weird, strange international okay, do I have names. Anything here that <laughs> says that anyone else has had high-level information? Had uh, so the suitcase receipt. That's not going to be anything for us. Um, this was testimony. I uh, say when it is took flight off, when the flight took off again, again at 5 a.m. Brief stop. Spill. In shop flight thing. Oh, I'm missing. Did the killer take it? Huh. That finger wiggle. <laughs> Anything here? <laughs> no, nothing there. <laughs> Finding an elevator. Okay. Hmm. I don't really have anything. I disagree. Decisive? Do you really think it's that strong? Apparently. There is no room for doubt. All of the other evidence points to her as well. Hmm. No snappy comeback? That's as it should be. Oh! There's not a single flaw in Francesca's reasoning. However, there must be something I can work with that I can draw out of her. 
Well, I guess I'll press this one too. That might be true, but then it could be anyone, including Miss Mueller or even the captain. Don't be a fool. A plane without a pilot in the cockpit is like a horse without a rider, crop in hand, much like Scruffy over there. Hey. <laughs> the day. <laughs> no. I can't disagree with her on that. Detective Gumshoe does always need a guiding hand. <laughs> Very well, then what about the other flight attendant, Miss Meal? Ha! I thought you might ask about her. The point key of cue mine is the key card, blah, 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 blah. But it's highly likely that the key card was stolen from Mr. That's Nero. what I said. It's highly likely. Is that possibility is the best you can come up with? And you call yourself a disciple of my father. Duh. Yes, well, while I don't have any evidence, I... Be quiet! You're a disgrace! There's more evidence pointing to Miss Rhoda Tenero, you know. It's not just the key cards that gives her away. Are you talking about the murder weapon? The Mr. I Fly piggy bank? Yes! She is also the only person with the key to open that display case! Hmm... I mean, oh, wait, we, we she is in charge of that. But that fell out in the turbulence anyways, ah, remember, because it broke from the outside. Yes, yes, yes. So, um, and actually, hey, it actually gave it to that to us. And is it going to be part of that or is it going to be... Uh, where did we... Did we have that as... Yes. Right? It was Taken out of a display case in the in-flight shop after the turbulence. But we don't really have the fact that it, like, came out from the glass. No. But maybe, let me, okay, I'll press this new one and see if there's anything that I'll say to it. But that is a fake. Oh, stop right there, Miles Edgeworth. You don't have any proof that this is just a red herring. If you must keep on insisting that this is a fake, then what is the real murder weapon and where did it go? Uh. Speechless, I see. That's not a surprise. After all, you know that we searched the entire cargo hold and came up empty-handed. There must be a way. There must be something that can help me rule out the piggy bank as the murder weapon. What should be examined further to help us ascertain the authenticity of the weapon? Um... Well, I mean... I don't want to say piggy bank because, like I kind of said in my theory a little bit, they could have whapped them in the back of the head after yeah. they died. The crime scene wouldn't tell us much, so... I mean, we can say the, the body, body to see if there's any other damage to it. Yeah, true. That's my thought. We're not going to lose any, too much like, from it, Any so. other damage besides the back of his head where they hit yeah. him. Francesca, I think you were too quick to jump to your conclusions. Oh, was I? Yes, we don't even have the autopsy results yet. Oh. How can I not say that you made a snap judgment when you have yet to even see... If the wound on Agent Hicks' head is consistent with the murder weapon. That too. Scruffy! Yes, sir! Contact the medical examiner's office at once. I wish to hear the results of Agent Hicks's autopsy. Okay. Hey, yes, sir! <laughs> God damn, that hurts. Can you stop? <laughs> Run away! <laughs> oh, God. But we got a big problem, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Oh, boy. <laughs> what is it, detective? They're still doing the autopsy. They said that they already know that one. This one thing for sure. Report now. The doc said it's one giant bruise from a beating from his shoulder down to his mid back. Whoa! From the victim's shoulder to his mid back, he was beaten over such a wide area. Well, I'd say maybe it's a sign the killer had a struggle against Agent Hicks. A grudge. A grudge against Missy. It wasn't difference. just his head. The killer went all out and hit him multiple times, sir. Jesus. Huh. Scruffy, what is had a grudge against Agent Hicks supposed to mean? I, well, that's, uh, I don't know. Was the wound on the victim's head consistent with the murder weapon detective? Oh, well, they said they were still looking into that, sir. You're completely useless. No, oh, I can't do the autopsy. Come on, cover me some slack. <laughs> I told you already, you can't go down there. Oh. Okay, it, this could either be... Well, I mean, I don't know why they would stop the captain from... Well, it, it this, is a crime this, scene this, still, This so. might be 
the, the angry man. I know. It's either going to be the captain or the... Because that's a weird, broken English line right no, there. No, you remove yourself from my way. What is all that racket? Yep. Oh, there he is. My luggage, my cargo, they're mine. I didn't to return them to me. We're still investigating the cargo hold. Please understand and have a little patience. I suppose there's no choice. Finally, I think he gave... Hey, what are you? You've left me no choice but to use strong force. You, you won't get past me. Uh-oh. This is... <laughs> wait, that's it. So that's what this oh, this whole thing has been about. Oh, maybe he fell off onto the boxes. Don't die, please. That would suck, but that would probably be a... Uh... Hmm. Okay, so we updated this. <laughs> Who can say where the rogue? All of that turned, just for a piece of logic. It turned black and white. <laughs> it's like, after all your knowledge, we searched the entire cargo hold and came up empty handed. Yes. He's thinking real hard right now. Yeah. He just fell on his head. He did. The duck said that's from one giant bruise and beating from his shoulder down his oh, back. Oh, God. You see yeah, that? Yeah, that was pretty brutal. He literally just landed on his head. Um, he should have a broken neck right now. Yeah. But hey, I get to connect my thoughts. So, uh, the cause of death is extensive bruising from his head down to his head back as if severely beaten or as if he fell from somewhere. Hmm. I want to say the weapon couldn't be found yeah. and the cause of death should combine together. Because there is, there Connected. was no weapon per se. Uh, it was too an fast on environmental that. death. Can't see a clear connection between the two of these pieces of information. Ah. Too fast. So I want to say maybe if we, we go. We do that a lot. <laughs> well, I mean, the piggy bank wouldn't cause that. So no. Maybe we connect that with that. Come on, connect, connect two. Not even connect four. Just connect two, right? Big brain. There okay, we go. there we go. Allegedly, the killer struck the victim many times over. Allegedly. Which is why there is extensive bruising over such a wide area. But is that really the correct conclusion to draw from the evidence? The bruise from his shoulder to the middle of his back is one continuous mark, which is more suggestive of a single blow to the back. If that's the case, then the piggyback... The piggyback. And that's, what, that's what it says, the piggyback <laughs> it is much too small to have caused that. Piggyback. Therefore, the murder weapon must be something far bigger. Yep. Mm. And now we can probably combine the size of a weapon with... Oh, we don't have nobody the could, anymore. Nobody could find anything. I think we might be too soon on this connection, but we'll see if I that think actually so goes too. somewhere. No, nope. it is. Okay, cool. cool. If we're looking we both for, said nope, cool. <laughs> if we're looking for a ride with a large weapon, you'd think it would stick out. But so far, we haven't found anything that resembles a weapon of any sort. Perhaps, just perhaps, it's something we've all overlooked from the very beginning. Because normally it's too impossibly big to be taken into consideration. The boxes. Well, what was that all about? Was he trying to jump his way down here? Francesca. V what? What do you want? I found it, Francesca. I <laughs> found the real murder weapon. Y you did? He, he really jumped. He's still focused on him. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't realize it until now, but the answer has been right in front of us the whole time. He might be hurt. We should go check up on him, sirs. There's that pompous attitude of yours again. You should learn to drop that habit. It's coming from a prosecutor with a habit of whipping everyone she comes across. Anyway, if you really are prosecutors, then you'll back yourself up with some evidence. You two aren't listening at all, are you? Look, his neck <laughs> is at a 170 degree angle. <laughs> Come on, we need to help the man. 170 degrees. Exactly, it's fucking snap, Come on, man. then, show me this real murder weapon you speak of. I mean, I don't have it evidence of it. Yeah, it's, don't over, have it's over there. To show. So <laughs> I don't have any evidence to show you. Foolish reasoning for a foolish fool from a foolishly foolish fool meant to fool me. Holy crap, it's been a while. What do you mean by I don't have any evidence to show? Perhaps I should have phrased it as that which caused Agent Hicks' death is incorporeal. Forgive me, but I do believe I have figured out what was the real cause of death. Cause I'm free falling. Strangulation. <laughs> the victim fell from a great height and subsequently died as a result. In other words, the real cause of death is free falling to the ground. He f f f 
Fell to his death. Yes, that's the only plausible possibility. The victim has extensive bruising in the back of his head and his back. The only rational explanation for these injuries is that he fell to his death. Oh, this music. But but the murder happened inside this plane. I know. Are you claiming that there is some place in this plane from which he could have fallen from? As I said earlier, the answer has been right in front of us the entire time. Come on, Francisca, look around you. You, <clears throat> you can't mean. Yes, I do. The victim fell from the top of the stairs of this very cargo hold. What? Then, then. We're in trouble. We have a second death on our hands, sirs. Yeah. Hey, you. Tell me I'm dead, pal. Quiet, why are you screaming? I have a massive headache and I have a uh. concussion, you prick. He, he's alive. Um, and there you have it, Miles Edgeworth. It's not possible that Agent Hicks fell over the railing to his death. That man is living proof of that. Hmm. I suppose it's true that's not possible, given the current circumstances. The current circumstances? What is that supposed to mean? Suppose that large piece of cargo wasn't there at the time. Ah. What would have happened then? Splat! <laughs> it would have been a Virginia pancake for, for sure, sir. I suppose that man over there wouldn't be breathing still. But the reality is that the cargo box is there. So there is no point in entertaining or vile the hypothetical scenarios. It may be there now, but there's no proof that it was always there. Ha! As if there could have been a window of time when that giant box was not there. Ah, uh, but there was. What? What can I use to show that it's possible the box was not always there where, where it is? The turbler blur blur Um, the refueling. We stopped from four to five trips with cargo. Oh, yeah, cargo. So. That's right. Yeah, turbulence wouldn't move cargo. It's strapped down. You refueled in the Republic of Zhengfa. Yes, this flight had a short layover in Zhengfa in order to refuel. But that wasn't the only reason for the layover. We also transferred some cargo. Well, if the box in question was only transferred onto the plane at that time. To further prove my point, let's take a look at what's next to the box in question. Uh, it's labeled Zhengfa Express. Oh, well, there we go. Correct, meaning it was loaded on the plane in Zhengfa. That pretty much settles it. And that's behind it. Now, what if the box in question was also loaded on at the same time? It would mean that the box was not here in the cargo hold during the Europe hang file leg of the flight. Making a clear drop from which Agent Hicks could have fallen to his death entirely possible. Yep. And you know what? That would put, actually, uh, Miss meal at the front of it because she has testimony saying that he was in his seat at 5 a.m. but that would be impossible if he was dead already. Yeah. Unless someone just plopped his dead body in the seat and it's like, he was sitting right there sleeping so peacefully. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you give her a southern accent? I don't know. I just had fun with that one, so. Uh, but your theory is still very far-fetched. Then let me a chance to prove how very likely my scenario is. Like the Pokemon. My first order of business is to be able to examine that piece of cargo in more detail. Begin investigation again! Alright, let's go. Farfetch is a let's... duck holding a leak. It is ridiculous. Oh god. <laughs> I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go touch this box. That's a red large piece of cargo. There's a tag on it, sir. Let's see. A left red statue. Never heard of it. Nor I, but I care. But all I care about is if I can prove it wasn't here at the time of the crime. Then let's get investigating, sir. Oh boy. <laughs> Oh, oh, he's God. getting mad at us. <laughs> Jesus. Look here, don't go about touching my possessions without my permission. Uh, don't rush up at me like that, pal. So this belongs to Mr. LeBlanc, does it? I should see what else I can find out from him. Uh, do we need to do we need to talk to him I more? I hate this man. <laughs> Look here, don't go about touching my possessions without my permission. So that's that first appeal, Mr. LeBlanc. Oh, please. Okay, I, wa I, I was trying to talk to him, but there we go. God. Your cargo. Let's chat. I take it that this large piece of cargo belongs to you, Mr. LeBlanc. Of course it is mine. I ship it for this fine piece of art from Europe. This Elifred statue is worth 10 million cents. No, maybe much, much more. Uh. Huh. Mr. LeBlanc's reason for choosing this plane must have been the car large cargo hold. 10 million cents. 10 million cents? 
I suggest you stop trying to calculate how many packets of noodles that makes, Detective. Darn, how did you know that? I feel like you keep getting better and better at seeing right through my every year. Though I grow with each revolution of the planet around the sun, I have the distinct impression he continues to madly spin in place. <laughs> hey, Miss Edgeworth, so that 10 million cents, is that in euros or in dollars? I d <laughs> Does it really make a difference to our case? Yes. <laughs> Mr. LeBlanc, there's a chance that your cargo is related to our murder case. I was wondering if you would allow us to examine it a bit closer. It was a very valuable piece of art, so no, there will be not touching. God, you're annoying. Hmm. So, you got this new piece of logic. Because he says it's a very piece of art from Europe. But there's also some smuggling that... Mm, actually, that would put LeBlanc ah. at the forefront of this, too. Because if he was smuggling, he would want to push him really off. And he really doesn't want us to touch it. Yeah. Mm, let's see if this combines if one plus one equals two. C connect. Thank you. Yep. Mm hmm. If Mr. LeBlanc has something to do with the smuggling ring, then it's possible this fake statue was brought on board in Zhang Fa. I think I need to question him a bit further. I think he oh, totally yeah. is responsible. Totally. Huh. Well, you know what? We're gonna find remember out. Because remember the fabric with blood on it, too. Yeah. But there could be someone else that could be potentially trying to... Because maybe that could be tied to the smuggling thing, but maybe that doesn't make him the murderer. But you know what? We'll have to figure this all out next time. Yep. Oh, we're getting serious As in this. As this zesty music plays. We're getting on you, Mr. LeBlanc. Oh, God. <laughs> just right up on him, just breathing down and his just neck. Like, just like, wait, wait. It's like, we're on to you, pal. <laughs> I'm coming for you. I know it was you. <laughs> I know you did it. And I've got my eye on you. I got two eyes on you. I got more than one. I'm not a cyclops. And Edward just hears things behind him. He's like, what is he talking about now? <laughs>